Good morning, friends, and uh, today we're going to Jeremiah chapter number 10 through chapter number 12. Thank you for joining us in our Bible study. One of the big issues with both Israel and Judah was that they uh, followed after other gods. They actually broke the first two commandments that you shall have no other gods before me and not you shall not make any graven image. And they they followed after other gods and idols. In today's reading, we're going to look at some of these um, scriptures that kind of show how far that they went. We're going to look at chapter number 10, begin with verse number 5. And, and uh, I like this verse because uh, it reminds me of some things that we have in our area with uh, farmers. Let me, you'll understand here. Their idols are like scarecrows in a cucumber field. And they cannot speak, they have to be carried, for they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither is it in them to do good. <laughs> Don't you uh, see as you ride by the field some of the scarecrows or some of the objects they put in the field to keep deer away, and sometimes the gardens uh, to keep birds away out of the gardens, and, and yet oftentimes... Uh, uh, even that doesn't help to keep them out. But the thing is, is the scarecrow or the object is is is, is nothing more than a man-made image or uh, to put fear. And, and so this is a good image that Jeremiah has uh, given to us. Verse number eight, uh, continuing on this subject, they are both stupid and foolish. The instruction of idols is but wood. Verse number 14 and 15, again in chapter 10. Every man is stupid and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols for his images are false and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of delusion. Uh, then we run over to uh, chapter number 11, verses number 10 and 11. These scriptures here are very familiar with some former scriptures. I'll point it out in just a minute. They have turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers uh, who refused to hear my words. They have gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant that I made with their fathers. Therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, I am bringing disaster upon them that they cannot escape. Though they cry to me, I will not listen to them. Here's verse 12. Notice we've read this uh, uh, before. And it says this, then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry uh, to the gods to whom they make offerings, but they cannot save them in the time of their trouble for their gods have become as many as your cities, O J Judah, as many as the streets of Jerusalem are the altars you have set up to shame, altars to make offerings to Baal. And that uh, uh, part that says your gods are as many as the cities, we find that also in chapter two, verse number 28. So he has repeated this twice that you've got so many gods, that, you know, uh, every city has their own God, so to speak. And and so um, they had run after uh, things that were man-made that could not help them when they cry out to God. Uh, I, I ask you a question. Do you think that we have gods, uh, false gods in our culture today? Uh, just think about it. things that man has made that we now uh, put more emphasis on than the one true God. Now you say, well, we don't serve idols. We don't have statues in our house and whatever. And that may be true, but but uh, serving other gods is, is actually putting a other things or other people before the one true God. And that's, uh, that's having other gods before our God. And that's also could be, uh, uh, could be having graven images, so to speak, um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a symbolic way. I was visiting a man in the hospital a number of years ago. And um, as I was, this man was dying actually, and I, I knew it, he knew it. But as I was trying to talk to him, he kept looking over my shoulder. Uh, he wasn't paying much attention to me, but you know what he was looking at? He was looking at the television in the corner of the room. And he was more interested in his TV program than he was me trying to help him in a spiritual way. The man died a few, uh, it seems like a few days later, but it, it just struck me of how, uh, how interested he was in, and I would say his God. I would think that some of the gods that we serve today is 
could, it could be made with technology. Uh, and, and people are so much more interested. They spend more time looking at the screen, whether it be computer or internet or with their phones or their television, spending more time and more consumed and they know all about uh, their favorite uh, uh, movie star, more so than they knew, know about the word of God. I wanna tell you, friends, we do have other gods. Uh, we have made other gods uh, in, in our culture today, and, and we serve other gods, unfortunately. Now, I encourage you, my friends, do not, uh, do not get caught in the trap of, of following after the gods of this world, but stick to the word of God and, and the one true God. Well, Jeremiah, he warned them, and he tried to help them, and you know what? He caught uh, opposition, a lot of opposition. We talked about yesterday of how they were trying to put him to death, and they did put Uriah to death, uh, but uh, another prophet, but uh, God spared Jeremiah. But I want to read over in chapter number 11, verses number 21 and 22. And, and we find where uh, Jeremiah, once again, his life is threatened, uh, this time from people in his hometown of Anathoth in chapter uh, 11, verse 21. Therefore, thus says the Lord God concerning the men of Anathoth, who seek your life and say, do not prophesy in the name of the Lord or you will die by our hands. Do not prophesy, trying to keep him from telling the truth, trying to keep him from the telling. You know, there's so many people that do not want to hear the truth. I have a friend of mine who shared a a statement with me that I, I wrote it down and I thought it was so true and even in our culture, but it's also true with Jeremiah. It, here it is. The truth sounds like hate to those who hate the truth. I want to say it one more time. The truth sounds like hate to those who hate the truth. And so at Jeremiah in his hometown, the people didn't want the truth. And so they came against Jeremiah. And we find that today, even this morning, I was uh, looking at a, at a tweet that somebody had retweeted. And it has something in the effect of, um, of real Christians do not support those who support abortion. And I looked at the comments under that. And I, I was so surprised at, at, at people that were attacking this individual because of their statement that real Christians do not support those who support abortion. And we're talking about in the political sense that they were in that. In that. And, um, uh, and it surprised me of the attack that, that this individual was getting. And it reminded me of this statement that the that, that, the truth sounds like hate to those who hate the truth. Uh, my friend, there's coming a reckoning day, a reckoning day when, when God is going to hold people accountable uh, for their uh, actions and the real truth is going to rise to the top and God's going to uh, reveal this to people. So my friends, we need to be very careful uh, not to sugarcoat the truth. You're going to be attacked. You're going to be uh, um, opposed if you tell the real truth from the word of God. If you, if you stick to the word, there's going to be people that think they're doing right. We live in a day where people really think they're doing right. You know, the scripture says that, uh, that there's going to be a day when the, then people call right wrong and wrong right. And we are there. And I believe it was the same with Jeremiah uh, in his day. And so uh, Jeremiah in chapter 12, verse 16, and I, I think that this uh, kind of sums up sometimes our feelings, uh, in, and it says this in chapter 12, uh, verse number 16, um, if they will did you learn, learn, let's see, Jeremiah 12, verse number 6, uh, okay. I uh, must have rewrote uh, wrote that quote down here wrong. I can't find the scripture, but what I will, will tell you that uh, Jeremiah was questioning, oh God, oh God, why? Why do you allow the, the, uh, uh, the, the wicked to prosper? And, and then it seems like those that are um, 
that are trying to do what's right uh, is, are, are, are not prospering. And, and sometimes we feel that way. In the Psalms, we see this a lot. But we don't know. God is always up to something good. And sometimes it may look like the wicked are being successful. It may look like they've got smiles on their face. And it may look like it. And even in Jeremiah and his attacks, Lord, why? Why is this happening to me? Why is it happening to me? And yet, I'm going to tell you, God is working. God is always up to something good. And I encourage you, my friends, today in this wicked world in which we live, don't stop telling the truth. Continue to, to share the word of God. No matter what kind of opposition you get, God will defend you. He will come to your aid. Father, I pray that for our people today, I pray, God, that you will just minister to them today as we proclaim the good news of your word. And we stand for righteousness, oh God. Be with us, bless us, and Lord, we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.